Yeah, so I got an Uber driver years ago who, <laughs> he started just, it came up like randomly. He starts telling me how when he moved to LA back in the 90s, he wanted he came out here to be in the music business. Okay. And he goes, he's like, I got invited to the party, the vibe party. He's like, through the contacts I've made. So he's like, I go to the party. It's like, it's the best party I've ever been to in my entire life. Wow. Same thing other people had said. He's like, because all these big celebrities are there, but they were all intermingling. Like everybody was all dancing together and everything. He's like, it was awesome. Because usually celebrities go off in their own little like roped off area. He's like, no, everybody was together. He goes, and he said he came out the garage and he, he described the, these big pillars here. He goes, the, he heard the pop, 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 pop. And he was with a girl and he grabbed her and they went and hid behind one of the pillars. But this is the door, these are the doors that Biggie and Puff came out. That famous last photo of Puff and Big standing on the steps, those steps right there. It's the same except they painted it red now, that's the only difference. But everything else is the same as it was back then. And this is where they waited around for the cars, the Suburbans to get brought around so they could load up and pull out onto Fairfax. So. You know, Puff, this is where Deal says, you know, Puff was talking to girls and inviting them to the next party. And I think, I think Deal's correct that, like, you know, security was kind of like, let's, we got to get out of here. Like, let's move. And, you know, they were out here to party. So, so they loaded up their Suburbans here. And then right around, and then remember Deal said something like he, like, he walked outside. You know, they, the security guys, I think uh, Damian Butler, D-Rock, did the same thing. They kind of walked outside the vehicles they walked. And, um... This would have been around the spot where they saw the striped shirt guy and where they saw the bow tie guy. So, and this is where, right around here, is where in the video I posted, the home video, where you see the guy in the striped shirt, he's basically standing like right here, looking this way. And this is where Puff Suburban is, sit is sitting in the video, because the people that were filming were right over there, where that car is, that truck are parked. So they were in a, in a minivan parked across the street, filming this way. So this is where you see Puff in you know the Suburban and you see Deal climb into the back seat. They're like ready to go. And big Suburban was still somewhere inside. He, he was out of view, you couldn't see it on the camera, but he was still kind of loading up. And they pulled away, going north on Fairfax. It's not that far between here and where the shooting happened. They barely made it, you know? And there's people out on the sidewalks here. There are apparently a bunch of cars parked kind of illegally along the curb here. And that's where they believe the shooter's car was parked down there next to one of the curbs. Yeah. That's where it all happened. So there were, uh, so there were the two Suburbans that had Puffy and Biggie in them. Then there was a, a Chevy Blazer that had two security people in it that was like the third vehicle, like the follow vehicle. And then, I guess throughout that kind of weekend, there was this white uh, Toyota Land Cruiser with some guys in it that had just been kind of hanging out with them. And uh, one of them was a local guy, uh, and then the other two guys, I think, were from back east. One of them was a filmmaker, another one was like a promoter. And, the, of course, you know, there's the story that right before the shooting happened, the white SUV tried to cut in between the third security vehicle and Biggie's Suburban that was in front of them. Right. But there's conflicting stories about what that vehicle looked like. Uh, even the guys, the, the guys in the security vehicle, they originally they said it was an SUV, and then one of them said, well, maybe it was a white limousine. Like they really, it was really weird how the stories change. And they, they, they found the guys that were in that white Land Cruiser that had been around that weekend. And all the guys, they all claimed that they were still in the garage waiting for the car to come around when the shooting happened. And they, I mean, they all said the same story. Now, could they be saying that because they don't want to have any, any way be associated and maybe people would try to blame them? Because I, you know, I don't think they had anything to do with, you know, the shooting happening, but I don't know. I, I, I don't know, but it is interesting that they're adamant that it wasn't, it wasn't them, so. Now tell me, um, you said something uh, to me off camera that you don't think the sketches <laughs> matter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or don't really hold any weight. Yeah. Explain. So the, the the composite sketches, well, first of all, uh, they don't look like the same person. So the two composite sketches, even though they were done, they were both done in collaboration between G Money Young, who was Biggie's driver, and Lil Cease, who were the closest witnesses to the murder. They both collaborated together on both those drawings, and they both, they don't look like the same person. Right. And if you talk to them, 
They'll, everybody in the car will tell you that survived that as soon as the shooting happened, they all ducked. Everybody ducked. You were actually in the car when all this went down, right? Yeah. You're like, so did you see the guy walking up? Did you get like a like a positive ID on him? No, nah, because he wasn't, you know, the, the guy didn't walk up. When we pulled out of the uh, museum, we got to that red light. It was a car that just pulled up on us with one dude that he came there and handled his business, just pulled right up and started firing shots at the big door. I was right behind Big, so all of us just had that reaction. We just all got down in the truck. Mm. The truck rolled a little bit, when we all hopped up. The only one that didn't get out the car was Big. Mm. You know what I mean? Then we all ran to the front of the seat, you know, try to talk to him, try to keep him up. And security jumped in our car that knew where the hospital was, and we just drove to the hospital. For we was leaving from the museum where they had the Bob after party. So you got, you know, Groovy Lou in the back, back seat who said he didn't see anything because he literally just ducked down as soon as he heard the shots. Uh, Butler said the same thing, ducked down. By the time he looked up, the car was gone. And G-Money said that if, and he's one of the guys that did one of the composite sketches. Uh, G-Money, who did both composite sketches, said that if you showed him a picture of the guy, he wouldn't be able to tell you if it was him or not. Right. And, and Cease couldn't remember what color the guy's suit was. He just remembered it was a suit and bow tie. Or it was like a jacket, suit jacket and bow tie. Right. So, how, here's the thing. These guys saw this in an instant. And then they ducked, because that's naturally what you do in that situation. So it's, it's literally a blink, a blink of an eye. They saw a person, and now they're trying to draw a picture of the guy, you know, weeks later. Like, how do you do that? Right. And that's, I think that's why the two composite sketches don't look like the same person. They're just like, you can tell G-Money especially just seemed almost exasperated that he was even being made to do this, because he's just like, I don't know what the guy, I couldn't tell you really what the guy looked like. Right. So that's why I don't put a lot of weight into right. the composites. Um, People argue with me with the, about the sketches that the sketches don't look like Gucci, but at the same time, they don't look like Amir Muhammad. Right. So, so yeah. how do you figure that one? They don't look like anybody. Exactly. That's why I'm just like, they don't look like anybody and they don't look like themselves. They don't look like each other. So I just don't. And when, when you look at the statements made by the people that, that you know, gave the descriptions the sketches were made from, they're both telling you they barely saw the guy. So. When someone's telling you they couldn't even identify the guy's photo if you show it to him, how are you gonna... It's not fair to ask that guy to make him give you a sketch right. of a person. So now can you tell me, um, your, our favorite bodyguard. Because uh -huh. um, there's a... I'm really confused on his, uh... His, uh... The person who he thinks believes who, who did it, because I know in his original police statement, point out, a couple of people or just one person and then it goes back in a documentary and says it's a whole different person. I don't know who Deal says did it anymore. Does he or does he still think it's Amir Muhammad? I can't I, I haven't yeah. kept up with what he said. I don't know. But in his uh, original in the original lineup that he he was showed he kept, Oh. Did he pick up more pick up pick yeah, up Yeah, there had been a there was an original six pack photo lineup um, and this is from Greg Kading and I I've seen the six pack where he pointed out somebody else different. And I think he has said that he, he didn't say that was the guy, he just said that that looked like the guy. And so, fair enough. But that guy, to me, doesn't look anything like Amir Muhammad. So it's kind of like, I don't know. He said I the cheekbones know. were higher. Or something, maybe, yeah, I don't know. I don't know.